Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Award Ceremony. Our host for today's ceremony is the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Randy A. George. Joining General George is Dr. Rodrigo Ramilo, member General Douglas MacArthur Foundation Board of Directors. Please stand for the singing of our national anthem by Staff Sergeant Ethan Zorak Green from the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Major General William Green, Army Chief of Chaplains. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please bow with me as I ask God's blessings upon this occasion. Almighty God, in your wisdom, you called us to a life of service and purpose much, much bigger than ourselves. Grant these exceptional General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Award recipients continued excellence in service, the wisdom to know what is just, and the courage to act when called upon to defend our great nation. As we recognize their exceptional leadership and accomplishment, help them to bring out the best in others and let their example of being a servant leader be shown to many. Thank you for this opportunity to recognize these leaders as they embody caring and compassionate leadership. We ask you to bless them in their leadership and may they continue to demonstrate the attributes of the profession of arms and the ideals for which General MacArthur stood, duty, honor, and country, as they serve our great nation and our United States Army. This will defend, amen. The General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Award is presented annually to recognize company grade officers who demonstrate the ideals of duty, honor, and country. Today, the 2023 General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Award is presented to 27 officers in the active Army, Army Reserve, and Army National Guard who display the leadership traits epitomized by General MacArthur. Throughout a broad spectrum of positions, these officers displayed true commitment to Army values, unequal technical and tactical competence, a mature understanding of their leaders, subordinates, and peers, and they exercised influence and leadership traits required for building cohesive teams that support the Army. These officers are the leaders of our future. The MacArthur Leadership Award is presented by both the Department of the Army and the General Douglas MacArthur Foundation. The Army is pleased to host this event and appreciates the MacArthur Foundation's active role in promoting junior officer leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, General George. Afternoon, everybody. How are we doing? All right, not many uh, 80, day, 80 degree days in uh, Washington, D.C. in November. So um, I hope everybody will enjoy it. So great to see everybody here. Who's here for the first time in Washington, D.C.? Raise your hand up high. Got a couple. All right, 80 degrees, but the traffic still sucks. So I will tell you. But um, 
it's a real honor for me to, to be here today, and I want to thank Dr. Romula, uh, Colonel Davis, and the MacArthur Foundation for their support in recognizing these great uh, leaders um, that we're going to talk about here. This award has been around since 1988, um, and I, I know it's a coveted um, award and prize for, for our young officers. So um, what's interesting, I was in your shoes here, and I got a chance to meet all these in, in 1996. Um, in fact, that's why I always ask, this was my first trip to D.C. and certainly was my very first trip um, to the Pentagon. Um, and it also happened to be the first time that I was traveling with my wife, Patty, and without our kids. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of advice because when I got here, I told my wife that this was just like going to be like a honeymoon. Um, and I've never been able to live that down um, ever since. So I do hope you enjoy yourselves after this ceremony. Um, get it, it's an amazing city here and get a chance to get out and, and see a little bit. Um, this group here represents the very best of our company grade cohort, and I mean the very best. And I did the math, and it gets slightly complicated when you consider all the demographics. But for simplicity's sake, if you take the active component captains, we have 1,147 companies across our BCTs, Brigade Combat Teams, in the Army. Only 12 of those commanders were selected for this award today, so about 1%. If you add in Compos 2 and 3 and our great warrants, the, drop, the rate drops to well below 1% which means that from among thousands of your peers, you 28 represent less than a half a percent of the company grade officers that are out there. You should be extremely proud of that achievement. I know I am. So how about a big round of applause here for you? So this is an individual award, but when I look at uh, all these young officers up here, I think about the 3,000 or so, and that's just rounding off to 100 per company of soldiers that I know have been impacted by your outstanding leadership. You all are the ones that set the example for our troopers. You mentor young lieutenants and NCOs, and you evolve how we train and how we fight in real time at the battlefield level. The MacArthur Award is given to those company grade leaders who exemplify his famous mantra, duty, honor, country. And believe me, these words are near and dear to my heart and to everybody who's in here. But today I'd like to share with you a lesser known MacArthur quote. And MacArthur said, a true leader has the confidence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions, and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. And he pointed out that great leadership is reflected in the equality of one's actions and the integrity of their intent. This is what you've all been doing in our company formations, leading with confidence, courage, and compassion, stemming from a desire simply to do the right thing for your troops and for the mission. This time last year, I was thinking, wow, this is the most volatile I've seen our world um, since I've been in uniform. And I'll tell you, in this last year, it's only gotten more complicated and more volatile. We're seeing an axis of upheaval forming between our adversaries, China, Russia, North Korea, Iran. A spark in any region could have global impacts. Our army must be ready to fight and win anywhere in the world at any scale. It comes down to leaders like you. You are responsible for building disciplined, cohesive, and lethal teams, for keeping your troops focused on our warfighting mission, and for innovating where the rubber meets the road. Thinking back 28 years ago when I was in your shoes, really just starting my journey, I could have not imagined uh, in 1996 that I'd be standing here today. And I know that General Papa, Secretary Austin, and I got a whole bunch of peers out there and many others would say the same thing. So to all of you, you may not stay in 50 years like MacArthur 
or 36 years like me, and I think that's okay. But the expectation with this award is that you will continue to lead with distinction, with grit, and with determination. I hope you stay in our ranks. And I was telling somebody earlier that um, I give you that coin for every, all you guys who accepted a coin, that is a six-year extension that I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna ha I'm, that'll be updated in IPSA right after this. And I hope that uh, in 2048 or 2050 or 2052 that one of you will be up here recognizing the next generation of leaders. But even if you don't make the Army a career, I do expect that you will continue to lead our fellow Americans wherever you end up. So I'm going to end with a challenge. It does not end here. You are here in this room because you are talented, driven, and capable. But this award does not mean that you've arrived. You must continue to put in the work and make a difference wherever you are planted. We are recognizing you today for excellence, but tomorrow brings new challenges and new opportunities. Seize them. Be humble. Humble enough to do the dirty work, to sweep the sheds, so to speak. Dig into details to see what needs to get done and do it. Be strong. Courage is going to change over time. When you are a company grade leader, courage is often physical, shown in training and on the battlefield. But over time, as you take on operational and strategic jobs, you will be challenged more often to show moral courage, to communicate risk, innovate openly, and speak truth to power. And be strong enough to take the hard jobs. I've had a nervous feeling at the start of many of the jobs that I've taken throughout my career, and I think that's a healthy feeling. Those jobs are good for you, and they're good for our Army. So seek out jobs that make you nervous. Step into the breach. And finally, be a lifelong learner. The world is much different than it was in 1996. You all have to be ready for change, ready to learn, and ready to adapt. You won't ever arrive. You are growing and molding yourself all along the way. Again, it was great meeting all of you. It's uh, wonderful to hear, if you could, for those of you, I know get family, just to hear every individual story, and I heard a, a couple of them just briefly. Um, you are a, a remarkable group, um, and I'm excited for what you're gonna go out and do across our Army. Again, enjoy your time um, here in D.C. Not too much, but enjoy it a little bit, and congratulations to you all. This will defend. Thank you, General George. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Romulo. Good afternoon. General George, distinguished guests, the company great officers and warrant officers, for being honored here today. To say that this is an honor for me to be here with you today is a great understatement, and please allow me to explain why. I am originally from the Philippines. In 80 years and 11 days ago, today, following the greatest naval battle in the history of the world, the Battle of Leyte Gulf in the Philippines. General Douglas MacArthur led the U.S. Army forces on a campaign that would lead to the liberation of the Philippines from the Japanese military occupation and ultimately to the fall of Imperial Japan. My grandfather, Carlos Romulo, served on General MacArthur's staff at the outbreak of the war and with him endured the tunnels of Corregidor. And he was sent by General MacArthur on several missions to the foxholes in Bataan, earning him a Purple Heart. And he stayed there 
until the last hours, escaping just before the fall of Bataan. General MacArthur had escaped a few weeks earlier. But now 16 months later on this October day in 1944, my grandfather proudly waded ashore on Leyte with General MacArthur's landing party to participate in the liberation of his homeland. You've probably seen that famous photo where they're wading ashore and uh, the little man with the helmet standing behind uh, General MacArthur was my grandfather. General MacArthur was my grandfather's greatest hero, and they maintained a lifelong friendship after the war. And so I am extremely, extremely honored and humbled to represent the General Douglas MacArthur Foundation in these award ceremonies today. The General Douglas MacArthur Foundation was established in 1962 to commemorate the life and achievements of the general, particularly as they relate to his credo of duty, honor, and country, and its relevance to future generations of Americans. In line with this mission, the foundation is steadfast in its partnership with the U.S. Army to continue this tradition of presenting the General MacArthur Leadership Awards to the outstanding com company grade and warrant officers who have manifested these ideals in their work. The soldier soldiers we recognize today here have been chosen from among thousands of their peers and re represent truly an elite group of young leaders that not, o not only the U.S. Army but the entire nation can be proud of. Their path here of course, has been underpinned by the support of their spouses, families, friends, and mentors. So we also recognize and thank all those who have sustained and encouraged the soldiers being honored here today. In the words of General MacArthur, and I quote, important new chapters of history are written every day and new heroes capture our imagination. Yet, it is critical that we never forget times past, the heroes of yesteryear, and the lessons of their successes and failures." End of quote. To our awardees here today, you stand at the vanguard of a proud tradition of leaders who have come before you. We wish you continued success in your military careers and beyond, and with deep gratitude for your service, and your leadership, I offer you my heartfelt congratulations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, General George, joined by Dr. Romulo, will now present the 2023 General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Awards. Today, each recipient will receive a bust of General MacArthur sculpted exclusively for this ceremony by Zenos Frudakis, a member of the National Academy of Design. Each bust is cast in bronze, mounted on a walnut pedestal, and weighs approximately 15 pounds. This year's General, Mac General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Award recipients are Chief Warrant Officer II Alexander Atkins, United States Army Reserve Command. Chief Warrant Officer to Jacob Applegate, U.S. Army Special Operations Command. <laughs> Captain Savannah Baker, U.S. Army Priority Air Transport Command.
Captain Daniel Bruins, Wisconsin Army National Guard. Captain Jason Bucklew, Tennessee Army National Guard. <laughs> Captain Jade Cruz, United States Army Reserve Command. Chief Warrant Officer 3, Sean Deegan, United States Army Forces Command. <laughs> Major Fiorella Asafe, United States Army Reserve Command. Captain Scott Friedland, Indiana Army National Guard. <laughs> Captain Nicholas Fuss, Nicole Fuss, United States Army Forces Command. Captain William Gerhardt, United States Army Forces Command. <laughs> Chief Warrant Officer 2, Michael Gibbs, North Carolina Army National Guard. Captain Trevor Goki, United States Army Pacific Command. <laughs> Captain Mary Hanna, United States Army Forces Command. Captain Anna Jones, United States Army Human Resources Command. <laughs> Captain Matthew Junts, United States Army Reserve Command. Captain Christopher Kimball, United States Army Forces Command. <laughs> Captain Brant Kinsey, United States Army Pacific Command.
Major Trey Mavers, Missouri Army National Guard. Captain Joanna Martinez, United States Army Reserve Command. <laughs> Captain Elizabeth Meade, Illinois Army National Guard. Captain Luke Neal, United States Army Reserve Command. <laughs> Captain William Norman, United States Army Reserve Command. Captain Edward Rugeley, United States Army Pacific Command. Captain Benjamin Smith, United States Army Europe Africa Command. Captain Pierce Watson, United States Army Forces Command. <laughs> Captain Joseph Wilkin, United States Army Forces Command. Ladies and gentlemen, please give all today's awardees a big round of applause. Thank you, General George, Dr. Ramulo, and all the MacArthur Award recipients. Please stand and join in the singing of the Army song led by Sergeant Zorak Green. March along, sing a song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done fighting till the battle's won and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. For where'er we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending today's event. Ladies and gentlemen, will the awardees please join General George and Dr. Ramulo for a group photo?